Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group. Today is April 27th, 2020, and it's Morse code day. Morse code was developed in 1836 by Samuel Morse, Joseph Henry, and Alfred Vail as a way to quickly communicate messages over uh, the telegram, the telegraph. Uh, it was dots and dashes. Uh, it's still commonly used in some ham radio circles. Uh, or ham radio operators. So it is still used today, uh, but definitely not the same way it was in 1836 as we have email and video conferencing and everything else to communicate. The NFL's first virtual draft went on from April 23rd through the 25th. It used a combination of Microsoft Teams, Zoom, and live feeds via Amazon Web Services. Leading into the event, there were some cybersecurity concerns, as this is the first time the NFL has done a virtual draft. The concerns typically from coaches and ownership staff were along the lines of, am I going to get Zoom bond? Is someone going to be watching my video, knowing what our process is, our thought is, before it is our turn to make the draft pick? Uh, from news reports, from everything I am seeing coming out of the event, it does not sound like anyone successfully Zoom bombed any of these teams. It doesn't appear that anybody has Ill infiltrated uh, that first NFL virtual draft. So kudos. The Chinese medical research company, Huying Medical, that's H-U-I-Y-I-N-G, uh, had a data breach um, within the last three days, uh, and the data is already available in the dark web. You can actually go into the dark web, buy it for four Bitcoin. If you don't know what the dark web is or how to access it, then obviously don't go into it. But for four Bitcoins, you can purchase all the data that they captured. Uh, right now, from the initial research, uh, research, it's showing that it's roughly two gigs of data, which isn't a whole lot of data that was captured. Uh, but from what you know, the reports are indicating there was important information that they were researching on uh, for the medical purposes, uh, as well as a lot of the internal organization information. So over time, we're going to learn more and more about this data breach. I think the most important takeaway from this just comes that you know every security incident has to be considered a breach anymore. If you're not considering it a breach, you really need to change your documentation and start considering it one. Uh, Microsoft Teams uh, discovered a bug. Uh, it was allowed by a simple GIF image. So if you use Microsoft Teams, uh, you probably have shared images to each other. There was, you know, a, a, the tester, the d person who discovered this, actually reverse engineered a GIF image that loaded a bad website. Uh, which connected the auth token to two subdomains which were vulnerable. So it wasn't anything on the front end or the user end of Microsoft Teams. This was actually a back end issue in programming. Um, so these two subdomains that were vulnerable actually could allow, just by displaying this image, a hacker to create a new Skype token that would give the hacker access to your team's account data and potentially more. So this is still a developing news story, but more information for this is going to come out. Uh, I think the best thing of everything is it's already been patched. Um, the flaw looks like it only existed for you know about three weeks publicly. Uh, and of that, there's no indication that anybody was able to utilize it in a negative way. But it has fully been patched. Uh, it was all in the back end. So if you're using Microsoft Teams, you didn't even realize it was happening. But it's important to know that there was a bug in it. Uh, Microsoft Teams is not immune to it. Uh, Zoom is not immune to it, as we all know from the news. Uh, there were four zero-day bugs discovered in IBM's enterprise security software, the IBM Data Risk Manager. Uh, so IBM is working on resolving these issues as well. So again, zero-day bugs happen. It's just important to know that they're there and to make sure your organization has processes on what to do when a zero day is out. Malicious domain registrations are quickly growing concern. So what is a malicious domain registration? So you can go to scottrdavis.com, you can pull up my website, you can pull up techwisegroup.com and get the Techwise Group's website. So those are standard website domains. Uh, to register a domain name, there's many places online that you can go. It's you know, roughly $12 for a year to just register and reserve the name. Hosting is a different animal. 
but malicious domain registration are people that are registering domains typically in bulk for a bad nature. Um, so in this case, you know, more than 16,000 domains have been registered since January touching on coronavirus or COVID-19. Uh, that could be, you know, COVID-19 news, COVID-19 vaccine, coronavirus, we have answers. You know, they're registering these domains in bulk. They're then placing malware, placing a phishing attack or something to enable them to learn either more about you or gain access to something that you're doing. <coughs> Excuse me. And then using that information to go to the next step of their data breach or that next step of this uh, security puzzle. Malicious domain registrations are not new. It's been around, you know, think about, you know, taking Microsoft.com and instead of the I, it's a number one. It looks the same, but instead of MI, it's M1. Um, now, Microsoft owns that domain as they do many others. Um, many organizations, you know, in the Techscape own many of the domains that closely resemble or look like their domain, but for a lot, they don't. Um, so malicious domain registrations are a growing concern. There are tools out there that will filter the websites that you visit to, and some of them even have uh, pre-built filters of newly discovered domain names. So domains that are newly registered or just created will automatically get blocked until your IT whitelists them or until they get indexed by the service and tagged. So there are some services out there. If you want to talk about them, post some comments underneath any of these videos or shoot an email to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. Automox, a cloud solution for endpoint security hardening, released its 2020 cyber hygiene report. The Cyber Hygiene reports a survey of 560 IT professionals at enterprises with 500 to 2,500 employees. What I think is the scariest number that I read in this report is 81% of those that responded reported a data breach over the last two years. 81% reported a data breach over the last two years. We're not doing a good job as IT professionals if that number is 81%. 36% identified phishing as the root cause. That's not surprising. We talk about that on a daily basis. 30% uh, was missing patches. This is common stuff that we can do as IT professionals to ensure our environment is safe and secure. End user education is critical. Uh, even in the middle of the pandemic, I highly recommend if you do not have a cybersecurity training plan, you need to put one into place. If you have questions on what to do, give me a call. I've worked with more than 10 different vendors out there in the scape, and I can give you recommendations, um, many of which TechWise Group are, are partnered with. Um, patching, we just have to do a better job patching. Um, and, and I know, and the next two numbers that I want to share with you have to do with that as well. Uh, on average, after an announcement of a critical zero day, it takes four to 30 days to patch your systems. The inability to take systems offline is the biggest issue in getting the patching done. So there's a couple of things here. One, an announcement comes out of a critical zero day. As an IT security professional, your first thing should be, how do I patch this? And when can I patch it? And the pushback that you typically receive is, well, this is a production system. We can't just take it offline. Well, that's fine, but you need to give a window. There has to be the capability to take a system offline for 30 minutes, for 60 minutes to get these patching done, to get this patching done. The fact that if it's taking you 30 days to patch your systems, workstation, servers, whatever, you really need to have a conversation uh, with your IT team, your IT department, your IT vendor, or scott at techwisegroup.com to figure out ways to speed that up. Uh, we typically push our zero days out immediately after internal testing. Um, we typically do our best to get all patching done on all systems, and we have an, an array of tools that we utilize at TechWise Group to get that patching done. The last thing that I want to go over today 
is just social media offers. I've seen an influx of those uh, come to me just by the people that are watching these videos. At least they tell me they're watching. Um, but just social media offers continue to be a growing concern. And it's typically something that you see when you're a member of a yard sale site or a, a group, you know, a community group that sells items or buys items. And what I want to do is I want to pull this up. So here on the screen behind me, you can see here, COVID-19, Huggies is giving $100 Walmart gift cards to pregnant moms and babies zero to five years for essentials. It's 100% free. Well, that sounds awesome. You know, kudos to Huggies for giving some money. There's a lot of organizations that are giving money out right now to help people because so many people have lost their jobs. So targeting a concept of someone that is in need works because it gets the person to click. So a couple of things that I want to pinpoint on here. A, you can kind of see that this is coming across on a county yard sale site. You can see, you know, county online yard sale. You can see the subject. The big thing that you're missing here is there's no link to comment. So you can't alert anyone else that this is spam. You're not giving anyone an opportunity other than the poster who posted it has the capability of posting another link saying claim yours and a link. So the most important thing you can see, A, if it doesn't have a comment, it's probably fake. It's probably spam. It's probably phishing. Just don't click it, report it, ignore, move on with your life. The second thing here is look at the URL. If Huggies is giving out $100 gift cards um, to Walmart or to whatever, the website address that you see of, you know, right underneath that link, you know, Walmart free gift cards, free Walmart gift cards, you know, there's a whole bunch of letters and numbers and that's site 123.me. Well, Huggies is going to, if they have a coupon, if they're given gift cards, they're going to direct you to Huggies.com to sign up for something because nothing is ever free. And even in this situation, they may be giving, you know, a hundred dollar gift card out but they're going to want to know who they're giving that out to so they can continue to market to you and send you information after COVID-19. Because now they're discovering who has children, you know, between that zero and five years, um, you know, so this is all market research and it's believable because it is something that potentially would be useful market research. And, to give out a hundred dollar gift card to you know a hundred people is it really completely unlikely unlikely here this is a spam it is not legitimate we have to do a better job of identifying these not clicking on the links uh clicking on the link it was a phishing website it had nothing to do with anything other than trying to collect your information there was no malware tied into the site uh, but it was still trying to collect information that was going to not Huggies, not Walmart, and ultimately is going to be used later for a breach. So that's what I have for you today. Have yourself a great Monday. It is the last Monday of the month. Uh, so have a great um, April. Let's have a great ending of the month. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow on the 28th. Thank you.